Why are so many people getting burned with crypto and with buying Bitcoin when Bitcoin tends to go up over the years that much? Why do still so many people lose? It's because most people learn about crypto when prices are high. There is a high correlation between price development and attention. When the price is going up, everybody talks about it, the media talks about all time highs, etc. That's when you learn about crypto the first time, prices are already elevated, then the early investors take profit the price dumps and so does your investment so the art in this game is to actually buy when nobody is looking when there's very little attention on crypto and what we see over here is the number of active addresses on bitcoin which tends to be hovering around 0.6 million and 1 million this chart by the way is taken from the glassnode newsletter and whenever this is very high above 1 million then we tend to be very high in the price as well and then we subsequently see the massive crash right the 80 percent drop from around 20k all the way down to three and a half k then we see the price recovering again we see again how the number of active addresses is at highs and that's again when the price tends to be high and that's when you don't want to buy but have a look at this we are now very very low in the number of active addresses and the price isn't that low the way i interpret this is that currently attention is not high in bitcoin the prices are elevated but there's no mania whatsoever this is not necessarily the time to sell if your time horizon is multiple years in length we are definitely not in a heated market right now. Prices might suggest otherwise, but on-chain activity definitely does not. I find it interesting to look at what the very large entities are doing. And that's here in the chart behind me. What we've got over here is the number of Bitcoin over time. And in green, we've got the balance held by the miners. In orange, we've got the balance held by the exchanges. Then we've also got the Mt. Gox balance that's going to get released at some point. It will depress the price. We also have the US government balance. And then in yellow, we've got the Bitcoin spot ETF balance. It's interesting how the largest players actually did not really increase their balance for more than five years. The price, however, did go up quite a lot, right? From the 3.5K all the way to 70K. Thus, I believe a lot of that recent rally was due to retail people simply buying in, right? It was the retail demand. And now the big, big hope is that institutional investors will come in as well, potentially via the Bitcoin ETF, right? We are already seeing first pension funds buying into the BlackRock ETF, etc. If we continue to see further adoption of that ETF, if we continue to see the same kind of demand that we have seen in the last two weeks, then traditional finance tends to buy up roughly 3% of Bitcoin supply every year. The main problem with crypto YouTube is conflict of interest. Too many YouTubers shill garbage, promote garbage and fill up their pockets in the background. Not this channel. Instead, there's simply the offer where I share my skills, my perspectives to you and where I also share direct access to me where you can ask me any questions. Feel free to check it out. The premium membership link is down below. Now there's something interesting happening with Coinbase specifically. One might guess when there's so much demand for the Bitcoin ETFs that the Coinbase balance will go up, right? The custody of Coinbase should go up. They should be holding more and more Bitcoin, but actually they don't. Check this out. This is the Coinbase balances and this is split up by custody balance and by the regular Coinbase customer balance. So not the custody product that's for institutional investors and for the ETF. We have over here the ETF launch, which obviously propelled the price up quite a bit, but we don't see how net aggregate the Coinbase balance is going up. And that's because the customers took away the balance from Coinbase. It was only the institutional investors that could somewhat reduce that balance decrease. I don't think that's retail selling. I believe that's retail using self-custody, right? Using their own hardware wallets because obviously we don't want to get rug pulled again in the same manner as with FTX, for example. But institutional investors don't worry about this. They simply just keep their custody with Coinbase and as there's more ETF demand, this should go up. There's something very interesting happening when looking at the whale transactions from and to Coinbase. There was a massive influx of coins into Coinbase. That was not because the whales were depressing the price. That was because of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust reshape. 
reshuffling. So what happened with the introduction of the Bitcoin ETFs is that the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust got competition. GPTC has very high management fees. The BlackRock ETF doesn't. And so a lot of people simply just sold their GPTC, bought into the Black Rocks of this world, and that then creates these on-chain graphs. In net, there isn't much of a change though, right? As you've already seen in the balance development. And so here's an interesting chart you've probably never looked at. This is the Coinbase price, the price of the Coinbase stock relative to the Bitcoin price. So are you outperforming by buying Coinbase versus Bitcoin? The answer is most of the time you are not, but currently in the last one and a half years or so, you tended to do somewhat well. But it's interesting how this is fluctuating, right? This is potentially a trading opportunity. Whenever we are high, maybe it makes sense to sell Coinbase. Whenever we are low, maybe it makes sense to sell Bitcoin. Currently, Coinbase tends to be rather expensive relative to Bitcoin. And I believe holding raw Bitcoin rather than Coinbase stock makes sense, especially since the balance here is not going up. Here's a similar kind of chart since we are already talking about stocks relative to Bitcoin. This is MicroStrategy relative to Bitcoin. So of course, first Bitcoin was outperforming MicroStrategy a lot. The vertical line here is when MicroStrategy started buying Bitcoin. And since MicroStrategy first bought Bitcoin, the stock outperformed even Bitcoin by almost 100%. So by 95.91% to be more exact. Again, relatively speaking, MicroStrategy seems to be somewhat expensive right now. A lot of people that bought into MicroStrategy stocks now also have alternative options, right? They might be selling their MicroStrategy in order to then buy the ETF. Let's have a look at one more kind of metric that is distorting things quite a bit. And that's inscriptions. There is now speculation of NFT-like assets on Bitcoin itself. That pushes up the number of transactions. That also pushes up the gas fees for everyone. Let's have a look where this is currently at. So this is the share of inscriptions transactions on Bitcoin. This is currently rather low. So maybe we do see another wave at some point. Maybe it makes sense to get into inscriptions now. You definitely don't want to get in when the transaction count is high because again, that's when attention is high. That's when the prices of inscriptions tend to be high as well. Currently, this is low. I don't know if there will be another wave, but at least now is a better time than in November and December of last year. And so just looking at the transaction counts doesn't make that much sense anymore. There's simply just too much distortion by runes and by inscriptions, etc. The best metric I believe to look at is now the active address momentum. And this is very low, indicating not too much attention on Bitcoin, indicating that maybe even though we are close to all time highs, we might have more room to grow if attention of course grows. If it's your first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish this regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. In case you have got Telegram, then feel free to join us. There's a Telegram link directly below this video. Looking forward to chatting with you. Cheers.